Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today on the Dade County Weekly Update. Remember, you can type in your questions in the comment section during the live update, but if you don't want to do that, you can always ask your question uh, via email. You can email us at info at dadecounty-ga.gov. Thank you so much for coming to the right place for the right information. Today, we'll be hearing from Alex Case, our EMA director, who will be talking about storm shelters and, of course, County Executive Ted Rumley. If you know someone who would be interested in hearing from any of our guests today, go ahead and invite them to watch this live broadcast or start a watch party so you can hold your own discussion. Remember that um, sharing the links to our videos are super easy and you can also watch this later on Facebook or YouTube. I do want to make a few announcements before we get started. Number one is that Governor Kemp did open all vaccin or vaccinations to all people 16 and older uh, beginning last Thursday. So if you would like to receive a COVID vaccination, you have a couple of options where you can do that. You can make that at our local Department of Health by calling 706-657-4213 or you can visit the vaccination station at the Colonnade. So if you work over in Walker or Catoosa County on the other side of the mountain, it may be easier for you to stop uh, during lunch or after work. Um, I will share those links in the comments in just a moment so you can schedule your appointment there as well. Also, congratulations are in order for two of our commissioners. County Executive Ted Rumley was recently appointed to the Georgia Environmental Finance Authority Board and Commissioner and Vice Chair Robert Goff was appointed to the Coosa North Georgia Regional Water Planning Council. Both of these appointments were made by Governor Kemp. So that is a, a pretty big deal for us here in Dade County. Congratulations to uh, both County Executive Rumley and Vice Chair uh, Robert Goff. Also want to thank all the members of our EMA teams, our first responders, and our hub members for all of your dedication and hard work during the storms last week. Thank you guys so much for being there. If you or someone you know would like to be a part of a, a volunteer fire department here in the county or a member of the hub, which is the, the more civic side, the uh, citizen side of disaster relief, recovery, and response, you can give me a call at 423-290-6655 or send us an email. We'll get you in touch with the right people to make that happen. Also, a reminder, today is the last day, today is the last day, April 1st, to file your homestead and agricultural exemptions. If you have questions about that, you can call the property assessor's office at 706-657-6341. They will be here until five o'clock today. So we will move on with uh, EMA Director Alex Case. Good afternoon, everyone. Again, I'm Alex Case, Director of Dade County Emergency Management. And as, as Carrie mentioned, the last few weeks, we've had some storms rolling through our counties with severe thunderstorm watches to th thunderstorm warnings to tornado watches. Uh, luckily, we never had a, a tornado warning hit to us at a point. Uh, we did have several uh, thunderstorm warnings, but one of the things we were wanting to discuss today has been a lot of questions have come up in the past during these storms is the, the uh, status of our current storm shelters that we were getting awarded a grant from a uh, 2016 um, flooding event that we had in this county, and it took several years for it to get approved by FEMA and uh, we're working diligently getting the sites prepared we've got the standard location set for two of them uh, we've got them marked out uh, if you happen to be down at the sports complex on uh, south of 11 if you when you go down to the main entrance like heading to dade county head start or the senior building and you turn right into where the soccer and football fields will be you'll notice four red flags that's going to be the location of the building these buildings are around 55 by or excuse me, around yeah, 55 by 34. Uh, they're solid concrete bunkers that kind of look like a, a flat uh, roof building with concrete uh, type look. It's going to be a, a regular grayish type color. Uh, they'll have uh, seating for 265 people. They'll be automatically open during tornado watches and available for folks to come in and set. Again, we're going to have one at the Dade County Sports Complex uh, South Dade Community Center on School Street in downtown Rising Pond and another one will be on Davis School Road close to where the uh, go past the school by the bow and up close to where the um, uh, saddle club members will be the building will be setting over to the right so again we're working diligently with that we're getting bids uh, the buildings are being constructed in Bessemer Alabama 
from a company called Modular Connection. They won the bid from the federal procurement process we went through. Uh, they'd be coming in stages of uh, a sports complex or be a first, there'll be four sections of the building coming. They will be attached together. Uh, we'll start seeing uh, foundation work soon, uh, uh, electrical and plumbing and stuff get to certain accesses of that building. Uh, but again, as with all the weather and stuff has really kept us behind, as uh, Commissioner Rumley well, as it stated a lot with our road projects and our dam projects that we finished up, Mother Nature plays a lot into this, so we're getting close. We're hoping with these next uh, few weeks that we're seeing with sunshine that we'll have some time to start getting some ground broke and uh, prepared for the uh, bids of the footers. Uh, Dade County will be working of getting the site preparation. Uh, we're getting bids from uh, contractors on the footing and the rebar. Uh, the, the specific loads, they got special hangers that has to be built inside the concrete so the building's attached to. So uh, most of them I've, I'm meeting with, I've met some last week and meeting some more this week. We have to have as many uh, bids as possible, at least three. But luckily, in one of the issues we're running into, a lot of, there's a lot of work going on, uh, uh, wise everywhere. So getting folks to get here uh, may not be as big as a project they would want to have, but we will be working these in stages. Carrie also mentioned our hub, uh, which again is our civic organization of our faith-based churches throughout the communities. And they opened up for nearly two weeks in a row during times of the tornado watches or uh, seeing where things were coming. We really appreciate those members. Again, that is still going to continue along with these shelters when they're finished. Uh, our designated locations will be those three at all times, but as other communities and people come up, we will share that information through our live uh, feeds during the times of the storms and in the future if more grants come available and moving forward we'd love to be able to put some more in the communities but we have to work and either acquire property that's owned by the county or its current school property where we can put them so again we're just blessed that we were able to apply for the grant. We were awarded it. It took nearly five years to get, get it approved, and uh, we've made one request of payment funding. We had to pay a third down on each building. Uh, we're waiting for that first payment request that will come back, which every time we pay 100%, the grant refunds us back 85% every time we get in, and that takes a month to two to get back. So we're having to watch uh, things like that and as steps come over and get prepared. So. That's our status again. Uh, I encourage everyone to have a blessed weekend and Easter weekend with your families and your church. And uh, if there's ever any questions, you can email us at info at dadecounty-ga.gov or visit our websites or give us a call. Uh, my number is 423-718-2111 uh, uh, or you can email us. We're all available from our websites. And please don't hesitate. Have a very safe weekend. Good afternoon, everyone. It's a beautiful day outside, but it's cold. The wind is really cold. Uh, we've got a few things to talk about here before we go into our report, uh, our COVID report. Um, as always, County Road 6, I've talked about that. We've talked about it for months. We're getting real close now. I'll give you uh, more of a definite next week of when that will be open. They're trying to make the final concrete pours up there on, uh, on uh, a uh, a ditch line coming off the side there and so I can give you more about that next week. Um, the uh, vaccination station downstairs, our, uh, our Department of Public Health is still open. Um, they do have, from what I understand, they have uh, plenty of vaccine, right Carrie? I mean as yes. far as appointments, I mean you shouldn't have any problem. Uh, as uh, she said, Governor Kemp had opened that up uh, to pretty much anyone over 16. Um, you can, you know, pretty well freely get your, uh, your vaccination. So um, there, and also we have the uh, partnership over in Catoosa County. We're working with them for the working people, you know, in Chattanooga that uh, may want to go by there and get your vaccine to come on the way home or go oh, maybe to lunch break, go down and get that. But uh, those, all those, um, the, the website, on our website, uh, if you need to need that number, it's, it's, it's posted on our website. Uh, Department of Driver Services, they'll be here next Monday. Uh, had a few people come in this Monday and got their dates mixed up, but next Monday, that's April the 5th, um, we uh, had a, uh, of course, Friday, as most of you know, we, uh, we buried our Commissioner Alan Bradford, 
That was a very sad day. It's a sad time here at the commission office. Um, we will be, uh, we found out uh, just a short time before that we had 15 days to replace Allen uh, from his time of death. So uh, we will be replacing that uh, that seat tonight. Um, the commissioners will be, uh, be voting on that and it'll be a temporary replacement uh, for a few months here, well, eight months, I think, until uh, actually the November election. And uh, that qualifying, I thought it was going to be in July. They said it's going to be in August now. I mentioned that this morning, but August. And uh, you'll qualify. Uh, you have to be from that district, of course, and live here a year. Uh, but uh, And then uh, you'll be running for office. Uh, that uh, election will be in November, and you'll take office in January. But this person here will be... Uh, appointed there temporarily until that till that time, and uh, of course, if they choose to run, that's their business. Then they may or may not. But anyway, um, the um, let's see here now. The qualifying, uh, you know, it does have a date here. I didn't have it this morning. August the sixteenth and eighteenth. Um, that'll be sixteenth through the eighteenth, and it's from nine to five. And uh, qualifying fee for the commission seats one hundred and twenty dollars. And from what I understand, now the city also will be qualifying at the same time. Their their commissioner is in in the city, and I don't have that information as far as the qualifying fee on that. But uh, Alex, is what two offices y'all have up now? Uh, is it uh, Parks, and Parks and Rec? Police, Police commissioner. So you'll have two seats in the city, and uh, then one commissioner uh, in county wide to vote on. Uh, but now, of course, the county and the city votes both you know you vote county and city so y'all be voting for a, a city person uh, two city replacements and plus uh, your county commissioner uh, we uh, whoever wins that office uh, as far as the on the commission will take uh, office uh, will we'll take office immediately uh, the, the uh, you know the, you'll be sworn in just like a standard ceremony of a commissioner uh, and that's to fill the unexpired term uh, of Alan Bradford uh, she mentioned this, and this is important. A lot of people forget this date, and then they come in a week later, and they, they don't really, they don't didn't understand, or that you know it it's set by the state on this um, the last day to file your property tax homestead exemption. So you know if you don't know what I'm talking about, go you know call the assessor's office right now and talk to them and see what's going, what you need to do. And also, uh, you said it was the last day too on the ag right on yes. the yeah the covenant, and that's a big deal, you know. Uh, that uh, that covenant is so. Uh, if you hear this, you know, call call and talk to Paul over there in the assessor's office, and she can explain to you uh, if yours are, are up or if you need to apply. Um, tractor supply. Uh, we're having a a big day down there. Uh, ribbon cutting a Saturday morning. Saturday morning. Uh, we're going to have you know some live bluegrass music uh, from out on the out in the, on the I'm not Cold City. But Mr. Breedlove out on the mountain, Sand Mountain, his band will be here from out at New Home. And uh, we're going to start the music you know, around 15 or 9, uh, I mean 15 or 10. So and we'll have a ribbon cutting, from what I understand, it's still on for 10 o'clock. Uh, be a lot of activities there, you know, going on. We're going to give away some free hot dogs, you know, and stuff like that. But uh, it'll be a, a good day, a good morning. Maybe be a little cool, but uh, I think all of you will have a good time. Come down and, and, uh, and meet your new tractor supply people. Uh, I was at the um, Fred's building this morning. Uh, I met him. I actually was down there Monday, and I came by there this morning and talked to him about a couple of things. And uh, they've got uh, they've got to turn the actual keys over to uh, the uh, Dollar General people, which is going to be a Dollar General market. Uh, they've got 30 days, and uh, that uh, that time started uh, actually Monday. So you know they'll they'll be uh, after the 30 day period, which will be right at the end of April. Uh, they'll be stocking, you know, probably take them a week or so to stock, and they'll be up and running and open. So that'll be a that'll be a big deal. Uh, the uh, Dollar General Sand Mountain out at Davis, uh, they did go ahead. They've got uh, they've got their uh, opening. They've not really publicized it that much, but uh, we're working with the chamber or the Alliance for Dade uh, about a date to do a ribbon cutting uh, for that store out there on the mountain. So uh, we will keep you informed uh, on that. Um, the uh, let me see if there's anything else here. Okay. Okay, our unemployment rate, uh, we're still at 3.2 in Dade County, which is good. Walker's at 3.6 and Chattooga's 6.8. So our, our unemployment rate, we're one of the lowest in the whole Northwest Georgia uh, region. Uh, the uh, grant program is still running uh, with uh, Paula Stallings here. She's 
here to help you on that if you've been displaced by COVID uh, anyway, as far as working or whatever, uh, and you're out of a job. Uh, she'll do her best to try to place you and find you something to do. Uh, that's it's really a good program. The only thing, the, the only holdback is you know you've got to qualify uh, and be affected, uh, have been affected by COVID. Uh, I do want to thank you know Alex and all of our, our police officers, fire department, EMA. I mean uh, uh, you know through these uh, days that we went through on these storms, as Alex mentioned, uh, that really uh, you know it's, it's a scary time. You know when those uh, when uh, they start announcing the watches and even warnings around us. So we appreciate all them, and I appreciate all the people that that actually understand and work with us too on that. And uh, so you know if you ever have any pro any questions about any of that, or like we do have the. Uh, uh, the uh, the uh, warnings come. Feel free to call me uh, our 911 uh, group here, um, and uh, we'll be glad to try to assist you as far as shelters. Because we do have, as Alex said, we've got several places that you can go if you do live in a mobile home or feel uncomfortable uh, in your house. The uh, tire amnesty day uh, it's been set for the first Saturday of May, May the first, and it'll, it'll go from nine o'clock till three. Uh, they're asking you know no commercial tires, no large tractor tires. Or truck tires, and um, each person can bring up to 20 uh, tires per resident, um, and we are limiting that to Dade County residents only. Uh, tires must be uh, clean, clean as you can get them, with no no mud, uh, with water in them. Try to get the water out of them or any rocks. Uh, the makeup date's going to be May the 8th. I have had a question there about uh, multiple trailers coming through from the same person that's trying to help people out here and that's a good thing it's a great thing the only thing we ask is that you know if you pick up uh, tires from five different people we need five ad addresses there where you've picked them up and a contact number to verify their Dade County or an address uh, well we can verify that uh, that they are from Dade County and uh, that's which is fine it's a good thing that people do that I've had uh, probably three people comment it's going to be out helping people pick up tires uh, at their places and um, the only thing with that way, that way it's fair across the board of everybody. And um, we know that that person's not pulling them from Alabama or wherever, or not maybe pulling them from a tire store, you know. So anyway, um, the um, COVID testing, uh, there's several places now that you, know, that you can uh, be tested. We have one here in the county, the Lawson Medical Price Pharmacy, uh, Primary Health Care, uh, and the, um, then there's others in Tennessee. Uh, but uh, you know, as far as the, the, the rapid test, the, the cost, I'm not really sure on that. You can go on, uh, see, um, um, Carrie has these numbers that you can contact these people and call before you go. Um, so, because there's still a lot of people, I'm sure, out there that, that, you know, that would like to be tested and that need to be tested, really. So, uh, let me see here. Carrie, have I left anything out? Did you? Not at all. Okay, good. <coughs> um, the, uh, <coughs> The numbers here, I'm going to stick with Dade County, Hamilton, uh, our real close uh, neighbors uh, with Walker and Catoosa, and I'm not going to go in detail because a lot of those numbers down in, in the Whitfield area are kind of leveling off. But Dade County, um, we're right now at 1,167 since uh, the day one, which is back in March. Uh, last week we were at 1,149. We've had 17 uh, positive cases in the last two weeks. And we've had 10 deaths in our county and 58 hospitalizations. Walker County, uh, they've had 155 in the last two weeks test positive. And they went from 6,129 to 6,215. Uh, Catoosa County, they've had 116 test positive in the last two weeks. Um, they they've went from 5,315 to 5,376. Chattooga County, uh, they've had 38 in the last two weeks. And uh, last week they were at 2,145, and uh, today they're at 2,174. Uh, in Hamilton County, total uh, since it, day one, they've, uh, they've had 42,338 positive cases in Hamilton County. Uh, last week at this time, they were at 41,953. As we speak today, they have 667 active cases in Hamilton County. Now, out of that 42,338, they've had 41,194 recoveries, and they've had 477 deaths in Hamilton County. Uh, Marion County, uh, they went from 3,038 last week to 3,051. Uh, at this time, they have 26 active cases, 
Uh, they've had 2,979 recoveries out of that 3,051, and they've had 46 deaths in Marion County. Uh, move down here to Jackson County, Alabama. That's one of our neighbors. Uh, they were at 6,711 last week. As we speak today, they're at 6,773 since day one. They've had 106 deaths in Jackson County, and they've had 54 positive cases reported in the last 14 days. Uh, DeKalb County, they went from actually 8,684 last week to 8,691 as we speak today. They've had 179 deaths and they've had 43 positive cases reported in the last 14 days. Okay, I mean, there it is. I mean, we're not, we're not dropping. I mean, it's not, I'd like to see those numbers be zero, uh, but the, the more people that are vaccinated, I feel much better about it. And uh, so just to keep your guard up, we do, uh, we have, uh, the governor has extended the, uh, the state of emergency till, uh, you told me the eighth, right? Wasn't right. that this morning? No. Got my days, my the days off on it, and um, from what I understand, after that, he he will relieve uh, that start relieving the actual six foot distancing and and the, the mask mandate. Uh, that doesn't mean that you're not you know a lot of businesses. I think Evan mentioned that this morning, but a lot of your restaurants, a lot of your close contact, uh, you know, maybe some of your beauty parlors and stuff. That that's their choice. They can still require you to, to wear that mask coming in. Uh, it's a, however you feel comfortable or they feel comfortable, you know. So. Uh, don't be surprised, and I wouldn't. I wouldn't really get mad at anybody that didn't want it because you know they're just trying to protect you and protect them too. So um, you know they can still do that, but it will not be man mandated, you know, um, by the governor. Now we've got our commission meeting tonight, and we will be living to uh, try to buy by the uh, social distancing uh, the best we can here with a mask. Hopefully, I said this morning maybe this will be the last one like this, and we can open it back up and put all of our chairs back like we used to have here and, and feel more at home, you know. But um, We'll, we'll just play it by ear and see uh, on that. But I appreciate everyone working with us and uh, pray for Alan's family. Uh, that's going to be really hard. It's hard on us, but it's really hard on them, I know. And uh, we appreciate everyone. I appreciate everyone's prayers and, and uh, all the, uh, the cards and everything that you sent and uh, to us. And it, it was just amazing. It was, a, it was really a, uh, a sad day, but it, it, the weather was great Friday. And, uh, you know, it was, Alan would have been proud. So. But we appreciate it. My number is 667-8999, air code 423. And uh, my office number here, our office is 657-4625. Our commissioner's numbers are very easy to find on our website. They do answer their phone as I do. And so please call us if we can help. You got any questions? We do. <clears throat> we do have one question. It is for EMA Director Case. Okay. It is um, about the storm shelters. And the question is, when will Lookout Mountain get a storm shelter? A little over five years ago, whenever we started this process of granting, we had to apply for a quick grant uh, application, a preliminary, and once we were awarded, we have to have government property. So the, pro the two properties, and uh, all three properties are owned by, two of them are by Dade County, another one by the school board. Currently, we have no property on Lookout Mountain that is owned by Dade County. So... Uh, we we will be looking to do that uh, we looked at some areas possibly where we could uh, where we could do that so if it comes more available and we have sometimes we have just a few weeks to prepare the applications when they come out how we got the application from the christmas uh, floods we had in 16. Uh, we had all the flooding the road damage and you know we, we were declared and we were fighting to get all the roads repaired then through that, through mitigation, we, we do a, a ten year uh, mitigation plan every five years, and we get funding to help write that plan and prepare. And one of those was storm shelters. So uh, if it happens again, and we don't have, we have to have the property because you got to send the property record in. So that was one of the reasons we were limited where we could put it. The alternative fourth one that we did have, we had to put an alternative in, was the old. Uh, North Dade School, which I think they use it as a community center and a walking track. If any additional funding from this grant is left, we would be awarded a fourth shelter that could go to the north of the community, but we're wanting to get them in all communities. That will be the next step is either some choir and some property that is uh, located around a mass area of, of uh, 
population to do to that. So that's one of our things and mitigating down the future in the next several years that we could do. Well, that was one of the reasons why Lookout wasn't able because we had no government property on the mountain. Right again, hope everybody has a wonderful day as uh, Executive Romley and all of us have said, and have a wonderful Easter. Uh, spend time with your family and your church, and uh, thank you for all, and if you have anything, let us know.